All right, everybody, thanks for joining me on my third video in this uh, trailer build series. Here's my shelf, and it's going to go on like this on both sides, so I'll have a good work area here. I noticed I, uh, I have a lip right here, right there. So I bought a piece of quarter inch aluminum. So the uh, bench or shelf can sit out here and, and lay flat. Okay, so I'm gonna center this spacer here, just by eye, and uh, get it right where it starts to turn flat like so I'm gonna tape it in place so it doesn't move while I'm uh, putting the board up there this treated lumber is heavy Okay, I want it flush here, or close to it. Okay, so I'm going to drill holes down through here, down through this uh, angle iron. And so here's a little carpenter's trick. I'm going to put my finger here as a guide and get the center of that. Just hold everything tight. And then... Bring it up here like this. And you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And be careful for splinters. You don't want a splinter doing this kind of crap. So now I'm just going to kind of eye where I need to put these bolts. You don't want to put a bolt real close to the edge. You want to give it three or four inches of free play here. So I'm just going to... I think that looks good. I'm using a carriage bolt so I can draw that head down flat. And it won't get in the way of anything I put on the shelf. And I was looking for uh, stainless steel carriage bolts. I could find them online, but they're really expensive. So I'm just going to go with the... Uh, cheap uh, electro plated ones from Home Depot and if they end up rusting I'll pop them out and put another one in but really I think these will last three to five years not a problem so I'm going to look under here so we need to bolt there on that one bolt here on this one come in about three inches here three or four inches so now I got uh, let's just split this in between here so he'll here be one just you know like that like this yeah I think that looks pretty good Okay, I'm going to use the spade bit to drill the wood. So I'm going to move the uh, wood in a little bit so I don't uh, screw up the point. So this is a 3 8 bit and this is a 3 8 bolt. So that's exactly what you want. And this actually will fit a little bit tight. You'll have to drive it down through there with a hammer. Okay, I went ahead and broke out the uh, tape measure because I was just a little bit off. I stood back and I wasn't off very far. So uh, right here is the, the center. So we're going to leave that off. And then I'm going to split the difference between that hole and this hole. So we're at, uh, oh, let's just call it 64. So we're going to be at 32 right here for the center. We'll just mark that out. 
and then this will be the same 32 so I have it 36 so I was off a little bit all right so now it's more symmetrical All right, so I've got these holes drilled for this rail. Now I'm gonna drill here for the uh, supports over the fender wells. Okay. Now we'll line everything back up. Alright, so I now have a, a high-speed twist drill bit here. Uh, it's longer than I need, but that's the only one I can find. So all I'm going to do is mark these uh, drill spots here. Just I'm just going to put a, a drill impression in there. Alright, so I've got I've got my marks here like so. Pretty much in the center. Pretty much in the center. I've got the holes marked here and I'm going to use this step drill, which is a lot safer and makes it a lot nicer hole than uh, a twist drill. And then I got my big corded drill here. Okay, I see a safety issue right here. I need to tuck these in to my coat so I don't get wrapped up in my drill. Let's see, I believe that's, I believe that's three eighths. Perfect. Okay. There it goes. Make sure we got enough. Oh yeah, we got plenty. All right, so I'm going to show you a carriage bolt it has these uh, the square shoulder here, and so what these are good for is is getting a bite into wood and then also having a nice smooth head and then that way you don't have to hold a wrench on this end when you're tightening up a nut so once they're in you give them a smack and then that will put a little square impression there hold that bolt in place Some nuts on under here some washers and nuts I'm not going to put any lock washers on them so I'll just continue that I'll just have to keep a watchful eye on them or maybe if they start coming loose I'll put a double nut on them all right so uh, now I got my 9 16th socket. I'm just going to tighten these up until that head pulls down in there a bit. I don't want to get extremely tight just so the head pulls down in there. Right, I've got all those uh, carriage bolts tightened up. 
and it looks good looks like my quarter inch spacer was perfect we've got a nice 90 degree uh, corner right there and it's really actually it's really sturdy the way it is but I'm I'm still thinking this is real sturdy here there's no flex to it but I know that this uh, treated lumber after a while could get kind of wild so probably put a brace in from here up from there up there and then one down here so I got might as well do it since I, I bought my bracing I have to bend it but uh, this is 3 16 by inch and a half by 19 and a half inches long and uh, I, like I said in my video, I think I said in my first video, I recently moved and I moved about 25 minutes farther away from my actual steel supplier. So I thought I'd find some place local. So I called a local steel supplier and for six of these cut, they're going to charge me $86. So I decided... I would drive the 45 minutes to my old supplier where six of these cut were $17. And then so I'm, I had them make me eight since they were so cheap. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is take my uh, angle grinder with a flap disc on it and deburr these bars so I can bend them without getting cut. Um, also, it'll make them lay flatter. Okay, I only need six of them. These are 19 and a half inches long and I think I already showed it in the first video but just real quick I went and I I held it two inches right here like that I came down here straight right there and I dropped down right here so you can see it's just shy of 19 and a half <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this first so I'm going to hold it flush with the bottom I'm going to mark right there for my first bend so my first bend will be that full length and then I'm going to mark I'm going to mark here two inches and bend it and it should fit right in there with a maybe a half inch back from this edge so I'm gonna start banging around okay so I've got my mark here I'm gonna put it in my vise and I ought to have a bigger vise than this to do this but I don't and I'm gonna leave that mark up about an eighth of an inch straighten this up so I get a pretty straight bend on it And I'm going to pull on it and also tap here. That's my plan. Man. Let's see. I'm kind of eyeing that. Let's go a little far. Okay, nice little bin there. Let's go see if it fits. Okay, so uh, obviously it's not going to go here, but I'm going to hold it here and get a visual of where it is here. So it's not too bad. So 
what I'm going to do is go ahead and mark two inches here and bend it this way and then keep working with it till I get one good one perfectly fit and then I'll make the rest just like it back at my vise oh that's perfect it'll fit right in the center of the vise with my two inch marks So same way, I've got to put the angle on the same way. So I'm going to pull a little bit. By tapping it, you'll get a crisper bend. Let's see. So what I need to do is bend this down far enough where this is out here more. Since these angles aren't quite a, this isn't quite a uh, uh, 45, so because one leg is longer than the other, so let's see what that looks like. <clears throat> okay, so what I meant was these bends aren't quite. 45 degrees a piece because this length and this length are not the same so if if I was bringing the bracket in about 11 and a half inches down that'd be a perfect 45 so but I'm holding that down here look at that all I gotta do is bend this this one up here a little bit uh, sharper and I'll have it made okay so I put a little sharper bend on that and that's laying flat that's laying nice and flat and so I think I'm just gonna go with that I'm going to bend six or five more just like it, and if I have to tweak each one, I will, but I think uh, I'm safe. I got a little free play here at the edge, about a half inch right here. I'm doing it one-handed right there. So it gives me a little bit of uh, wiggle room. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, what I decided to do is drill my holes now before I bend it. So it'll make it a little easier. So there's a little lost area here on the, whenever you bend it. So I'm going to drill holes right there. I want to put a hole up just a hair higher off the center right there on this one. All right, I'm going to make a pilot hole, but normally I would uh, use a, a center punch so my drill bit won't walk around, but this isn't exact science, so I'm not really caring right now. Just to let you know, this is three, two, one. Just to let you know, this is called hot rolled bar. So there's a there's cold rolled and there's hot rolled. Cold rolled is a little more accurate piece of metal, a little more uniform uh, because they've actually sized it 
it being you know cold this has been sized being hot so it, it's not a not an exacting process so your uh, hot rolled steel is quite a bit cheaper than cold rolled steel so for brackets and stuff like that hot rolled is perfect okay so now I'm going to finish up the hole with my step bit all right so I have them all bent and I'm going to paint them I've got some of this paint it's not quite the right color but that's what I have I'm going to use these shingles to paint on And the reason I like using shingles is because I got them right there from a job. Little remodeling job I did. All right, so I've got some acetone here. I'm just gonna wipe them down a little bit. It's not science, guys. Um, you know, it's not gonna be a classic car restoration paint job I'm just going to put a little color on these and hopefully in two or three hours I can put them on all right guys well I wish I had a little press break I could have made these uh, bins a lot tighter but you know I think it's going to hold just fine so maybe one of these days I'll buy one of those little uh, little ones you see online for about 70 bucks it goes into a 20 ton press which I have but hey a hammer and vise works just fine so we get the sides good this is the back side of the brackets so I'm gonna I'm getting some fish eye right there you see the fish eye right there that means there's some oil on it or some wax probably wax because if it was oil this would mix in with the oil so the way you do this on brackets and stuff you see that they're going to come back is you can wipe them like this see how I get rid of them like that and that should take care of them now you wouldn't do that on a car finish Man, I got acorns coming out of that tree like crazy. So I don't care if these brackets run or anything. I really don't care. Okay, so uh, I've got my brackets painted. I originally painted them blue, but I didn't like that color because it looks like you're trying to match something and you couldn't do it. So I just painted them black. Looks a lot better. On, on the front side so they'll go in right here I'm just gonna slide it over right there against my uh, tail light bracket and then just kind of eye it straight up here I'm gonna give it about a half inch margin right there just uh, quickly mark them with a pin I'll drill a hole up here put a carriage bolt in down here I'm gonna uh, use a new tool that I just bought um, it's a drill and tap all built into one so I'm going to see how that works so and then once I tap right here then all I'm going to do is put a uh, 3 8 bolt through and I won't have to come on the back side over here with a nut because I want to drill down I can't really drill right here and put a nut and bolt so I'll be down here in the wood, and so I can't get a nut on down there. And I don't want anything protruding over here, so this is the way I'm going to do it. All right, so hold this bracket, give myself a half inch margin up here, kind of eye it in the center. Like that. No, my camera angles suck. And I'm going to mark it here. And I'm going to take this bit, spade bit, and mark the center up here. 
now I get to uh, start drilling. Okay, so I have my uh, mark right there. If you have a center punch, I can't find mine and I don't want to grind one. You could just center punch that in the center of your mark. And then that way it keeps your bit from walking. But it doesn't have to be too accurate. And if I start slow, my bit won't walk very much. So this is a uh, drill bit. I'm just going to make a pilot hole. Now I'll put this on low. If this works, um, then I'll put a link in the description down below. I really don't know. kind of caught there okay now I'm through I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, cutting oil on there so hold on a second okay so my cutting oil I looked in my garage couldn't find it I know it's over in my storage unit because I cut and thread gas pipe since I'm a plumber so I've got some used motor oil right here gonna work just fine for what I want to do so we're going to see if it if it threads. And there you go, man, it went right in. All right, let's see if my bolt works. Perfect. All right, so, I mean, if you're doing a ton of holes, I'd probably do them, you know, separate. Drill it, then tap it, but um, I was afraid this might twist off, but it didn't. So I'm gonna come up here and drill this hole. So I changed to my 3.8 spade bit, and I'm going to drill up till the point comes through then drill down so I don't have a big breakout area up here okay so you see the point coming through if I keep going it'll be nasty up here so I'm gonna go down from the top nice clean hole okay so I got my holes drilled and this one will probably be the most difficult to start so i'm going to start it first okay started it now i gotta do the top one Got that through and I'm going to take my hammer and tap this down all right got my hammer so that'll keep that from turning can't find my nut there's my nut and I'm not even worried about lock washers these will hold just fine you don't have to have a lock washer on everything in fact when I used to to be an auto mechanic um, there were a lot of vehicles that did not have lock washers put on the uh, nuts and there was a study that showed that if you properly torque a bolt or a nut that just that tension will hold that together just as well as a lock a lock washer <clears throat> also I want to show you guys that I purchased grade 8 these are very hard bolts grade 8 bolts so I figured this will rust one of these days and I may have to take this off and being a grade 8 bolt 
it won't rust as fast but if it does I can just put an impact on there and just rip it out of there so if you use a soft bolt it would just twist off so that's why I got a grade 8 bolt there now these carriage bolts you know probably ought to be stainless steel but I didn't have stainless steel so I'm using these uh, uh, zinc electroplated bolts and if those rust I can get those out easily they're right up here so there's my bracket Let's see. that's sturdy all right there you go I got all three brackets on here and oh yeah it's sturdy I mean, even if you only put one on each end, that'll keep it from flopping in the wind or anything. But, uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'll do the other side, and that will conclude this video. Appreciate you uh, watching my videos, and please like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I don't care. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the uh, comment section.